Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial, my name is Timster. Today I'm going to be going over how to add good looking optimized shadows to your games in the Blender Game Engine. So in this tutorial we're going to be going over how to use the alpha channel from a texture to add nice looking shadows and then also we're going to be going over a simple setup to make sure that the shadows only show up when the player is nearby. So as you can see here, when I've moved far away we don't have any shadows and then when we go close again we have our shadows back. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, file new, open up a new blend file. Then I'm going to press X and delete, shift A, add myself a plane, press S, and then we're going to type in 20 to scale it by 20 units. So something like this, uh, maybe a bit more. So S and then just drag. And then up the top here, Blender Game Engine, GeoSL, animation frame rate of 60 and then here this camera we don't need so X and delete then over here text view so now what we need is a sun lamp and a hemi lamp so let's select our first lamp here and change it to a hemi put down the energy to maybe 0.2 alt R to get rid of the rotation and then here I'm going to give it a blue color so maybe something like that then shift A add ourselves a cube move it up and then I'm going to select my lamp here, press Shift D to duplicate and then RY, rotate it a bit and this here is going to be our sun so here under energy I'm going to select 1 or even 1.5 then in the color field here I'm going to go ahead and select an orange color so maybe something like that so now what we need is one more thing and that is to be able to walk around the level and look at our shadows so we need a player so I'm going to left click up here then I'm going to open up this menu here or by pressing N and then I'm going to scroll down and down the bottom here I'm going to click add FPS setup now if you don't have this button don't worry there's a link down in the description below it's basically a very simple add-on I made and all it does is adds in a first person setup so you can walk around the level and stuff so I'm going to click it and then now I can press numpad 0 and press play and we are able to walk around the level so I'm going to zoom that in and there we go so now with our player selected I'm going to go ahead and bring him down on the z-axis till he's relatively close to the ground alright so numpad 1, numpad 5 and we're just going to move it down very close so now what I'm going to do is select my sun lamp here and we're going to start going over all the different properties so first of all we have show shadow box and this basically shows us where the shadows will show up so if we move our sun lamp out of this radius then we won't get any shadows next we have the buffer type down here we have both simple and variance now variance here does look a lot nicer and it has a lot smoother shadows as you can see here so if we duplicate this uh, move it around lots you can see that the shadows are a lot smoother and then also around the edges they have some fall off to make it look nice now these shadows do cost a bit more performance so it's really up to you if you want to use them or not if you are having a game that is just mainly based off structures and has no smoke no grass or no particles or anything like that then feel free to use variants but if you want to have alpha shadows like you saw earlier at the start of the video then you have to be using the simple shadow type so for this tutorial we're going to stick with the simple type now next here we have the size option which is the quality of the shadow so as you can see here uh, it's only pixelated when you zoom in very far however this size if you increase it it will make it look a lot crisper and a lot nicer but it will cost you a lot more memory so if possible try keep this value as low as you can but at the same time try keep your game looking nice so for this demo I'm going to change it to 2048 next here we have the bias and we'll come back to that when we have alpha textures to deal with this basically determines how accurate the shadows are the next option here is only really used for the variance shadow type so if you're using simple this shouldn't really matter too much now down the bottom here we have three very important values so the first one here is the clipping start of our lamp so basically to see what that is I'm going to press numpad 1 and you can see this is the clipping start right here so if we turn it down a bit we can move it closer to our sun lamp and if we turn it up we can move it out now basically what we want to do is keep this volume in here as small as possible so what I'm going to do is reduce my clip end all the way down until it's just underneath the floor so you want it just below so that we have shadows all the way over here now one other thing you have to keep in mind is this bottom line here 
So for example this tall object here, you realize the top of it doesn't get any shadow. And that is because it is above this last line here that we have on our sun lamp. So to get rid of that, we're just going to increase the volume on this. So I'm going to press G, Z, and Z again. And then I'm just going to move my sun lamp outwards. All right. And again, until you have the highest objects contained within this. And then what we want to do is we want to increase this clipping end all the way down to the floor level again. Now, last but not least, we have the frustum size. So this is going to be how much area we have for displaying shadows in. So if I go ahead and turn the size up here to something like 40, uh, you'll notice we get a really, really large area. But at the same time, the shadows we have now are very bad quality. And the reason for that is when we had a small frustum size, we managed to fit all 2048 pixels within the square block. So they looked all right. But once you scale it up four times to something like 40, then you start getting very bad pixelated shadows because there isn't enough pixels for the shadow map. So what you want to try and do is try find a good point between the frustum size and the quality and performance and try sort of balance them all out together. Now in regards to adding shadows to your whole level, most people will probably just have one sun lamp and then a massive area for all of their shadows. However, this is a bad idea because then you have all this performance being put into shadows that the player can't even see in the distance. So to optimize this, we're going to be using a very simple technique called vertex parenting to go ahead and make sure that the sun here follows the player but doesn't follow the rotation. So first of all, I'm going to go down here and change the frustum size to something like uh, 20 and then I'm going to press enter and now what I'm going to do is turn the clipping just extend it out and then also I'm going to maybe uh, turn this clipping down a bit and additionally maybe move it up a bit so GZZ and move it up and then extend the clipping again so now what I want to do is select the sun lamp here hold down shift select the cylinder and press control P and parent to vertex. Now what this will do is it will take our sun lamp here and parent it to a vertex on the player. So to explain vertex parenting a bit more, let's have a look at these two objects here. So this here is a child object and it's been parented to this object here. So this one here will inherit all rotation and location values from this one over here. So as you can see, when I rotate it, this one also gets rotated. And when I move it, this one also gets moved. So instead of that, if I go ahead and I press vertex parent, now what it's going to do is it's going to parent this one to one vertex on this object here. Now vertex is this one point here. And basically what it is, is like a set coordinate in 3D space. So it has an X location, a Y location, and a Z location. However, because it's just one set point, this means it can't have a rotation and it can't be scaled. It can only be moved. So we're going to use this to our advantage to use the player's location to move the sun with it and the shadows. So back to our demo here, what we're going to do is we're going to press numpad 7 to go into top view. Then I'm going to select my sun here and I'm going to move it so that the player is in the center of the white square. This means that we'll have sort of an equal area around the player for there to be shadows. So now when the player moves around, you'll see the shadow map moves around with them as well. So I'm gonna press numpad zero and I'm gonna press play. And so now we can move around the level like so. And then when we move away from our objects like this, then you see the shadows disappear. And once we get close again, then we have shadows added back to our game. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is quickly go over how to add alpha base shadows. So I'm going to select the 3D cursor, move it over here, just left click, shift A, add a plane, RY90, move it up. And here I'm going to call this grass, go to the material settings, click new, no specular. And we're going to turn on transparency, no alpha, no specular. Go to the texture tab, click new and we're going to go to open up a alpha texture. So I'm going to open up this grass texture here. Now one thing you will need for these alpha textures is to make sure it's an RGBA file and also you have to make sure it's a PNG. Then once you've got that, you can go down here and under the influence, check alpha. Then what we're gonna do is press tab, go to edit mode, U and unwrap. Now you notice it's sideways, so we're gonna make a new window here, UV image editor, R90 to rotate at 90 degrees. Go back to object mode and get rid of this. 
All right, so we have our grass here. And now what we want to do is we want to get some shadows for it. So as you can see here, we just have a flat plane. We don't have any proper shadows. However, when we press play, you'll notice that we do have shadows. Now, if you look at the shadow carefully, you'll notice it's very low resolution and it doesn't look really anything like the grass. The reason for that is we have semi-transparent values around each blade. And this sort of makes the shadow map confused because the shadow map, as far as it's concerned, can only be dark or light. So we need something similar to reflect this in our texture. So what we're gonna do is go to the material settings and scroll down under alpha blend, we're gonna choose alpha clip. Now this here is gonna clip our texture down to only have two values on or off for the alpha channel. And this also means now when we press play, you'll notice that we have a better looking shadow map. Now one very important thing with these sort of textures is that by default under the material settings we have back facing selected. Now what that means is if I rotate this 180 degrees, so this is the back face here and we press play, we don't get a shadow or grass at all. So if you want to be having shadows, I highly recommend that you go ahead and just for the grass and particles and stuff you turn off back facing and that means that both sides of the texture will show. However, only do this for the grass and the textures and things you need, because again, if you turn it off for all objects, then you lose performance. All right, so last but not least, you'll notice we have a gap here. So even though this is in the ground, we still have a gap between the shadow and the actual object. And this is determined by the bias on the sun lamp. Now, if we turn down this bias setting on our sun lamp, you'll notice that the gap decreases and gets a lot smaller, but as we get to very low values, you start to see banding on our other objects. So at the moment, it's not too bad, but for example, if we turn it down to the minimum, you'll start getting bands over everything. So I would only recommend 0.1 as a minimum. Uh, this is also dependent on the size and quality that you have for your scene. So for example, if I make this 1024, which is a quarter of the value, on the other objects in our scene, you see we start to get banding down them. So this is when you have to turn up the bias a bit more until they disappear. Uh, however, again, you'll trade this off between the gap beside our objects. So for your shadows, you have three main factors. You have the size here, which is the quality. You have the bias, which is how accurate they are for your alpha-based textures. And then you also have the frostum size, which scales your shadow map to fit your game scene. So there we go, guys. That's how to add good-looking optimized shadows to your games in the Blender Game Engine. If you enjoyed the tutorial, feel free to leave a like, comment, or share down below. All of that stuff is greatly appreciated. But apart from that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys in the next one.